I'm Naisha McCauley, and you're watching AccessTV.org. night I went to a function that was called Footlights and that was on Farmington Avenue and I had a wonderful time. So Deborah Malden, yes I was there. Pamela Wright from Make It Happen, accesstv.org. And uh, this is the second day of summer. I just want to tell everybody, I hope everybody's enjoying themselves and having lots of fun. And yeah, you still got to work. And I want to tell you about a couple of things that are going on around in Hartford, Connecticut, okay? So this is going to be happening tomorrow from 2 to oops, let me, two to 5. And this is going to be, uh, it's called the Passages Gallery, 21, Whit, Whit, I mean, 21 Whitney Avenue in Hartford. Whitney Street, excuse me. And it's like the Elizabeth Park. And it's free. So i like everybody to come down and just enjoy themselves. Hopefully it's free wine, free um, cheese, and everything else like that. So come check it out. You can also win a pair of tickets to the Windsor Jam, which is um, I like to go to, and I hope you're interested in attending. So there will also be uh, special discounts uh, on the tickets to the Windsor Jazz Jam. And no, I don't know when it is. Hopefully it will be sometime in July. So. I want you to also keep up with the MCC on Main. Uh, check out the people, Teresa Wright, uh, Ray Sean Langley, and uh, Poetry. I'm having a gentleman come on my show um, in the future. That's a part of the poetry, uh, which is very interesting. Some, this is the first time I've ever seen people snap and stuff like that on poetry, you know, give me the ups and they're snapping. So I thought that was kind of fun. And uh, I saw Miss Keisha Grant. Yes, she was on my show. And I want to thank everybody that has been on all my previous shows. I really enjoyed them. Got a lot of information uh, regarding what they're doing and uh, what they're going to be doing in the future. So, in all said, I am going to um, introduce my guest. And um, actually, I've done a few things with him, too. It's a he. I usually have women on my show, but now it's time to go to the men's side. So, it's Marcus. Mosiah Jarvis, okay? Yes, he's on Facebook, and um, he does acting, singing, poetry. Poetry. All right, so welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you for having me. You're welcome. And um, how did you get into um, the singing, poetry, and all acting and whatnot? Well, uh, um, I, I came up through Cork Middle School, Hartford High, and at that time I was singing with uh, Connecticut Opera. Uh, both my parents were singers out of New York. My father sang for um, Metropolitan Opera as well as my mom. And uh, so I kind of got the talent from the family. Um, and I came here to Hartford and I got involved in uh, Hartford City uh, All Choir with uh, Dr. Gerald Knack okay. and worked with Doris Kosloff again at the Connecticut Opera. Uh, and then, of course, um, I met Jay Stan McCauley at Hartford Public Access and started doing plays and movies with uh, uh, Stan McCauley and actually um, was mentored by him and produced and, and acted and composed music for one of his plays called The Door. Oh, okay. Yes, I remember that one. Um, Can but people I, still catch that on the website? Yes, yes, okay. yes. There's a, if you Google Marcus Jarvis The Door on YouTube, there's an interview that Stan shot and also shot the rehearsals uh, from the play that um, premiered at the Black Box Theater in Washington, Washington Street in Hartford. Oh, okay. Um, but I, I had, even with all that, I hadn't really focused yet on what it was 
um, that I really like to do. You know, I mean, I, I studied ballet with Albano Performing Arts um, with Joseph Albano and Gerard Avenue in Hartford. Okay. And I did voice and I even did set design. But um, I believe that God gave me all these gifts to, to be used for, for, for his ministry in the winning of souls. And so now um, I'm uh, a minister of music and, or a gospel artist, what have you. And that's what I'm working on now. Okay. And I, I also got the chance to work with you also um, on the oh, show yes. called Out the Box. That's the trait. Yeah. Out the Box. Let's not forget about that's that. That's right. All righty now. I, I had fun with that. I learned a lot. Um, it takes time to be in the engineering booth all by yourself. Yes, yes. So once you get the hang of it, and then when you come back for a couple of weeks, you'll forget all about it. Um, but I did have fun, and you do learn. Yes. As a matter of fact, had I not worked with you on that, I've never been behind the scenes. I've always been in front of the camera. So that was definitely a learning experience working uh, with you right. behind the scenes in the engineering booth at uh, Hartford Public Access. Okay. And also, um, we're on Public Enemy, number one. Yes, I yeah. uh, premiered. I was a star um, in a play that stand, um, excuse me, in a movie that aired on PAX TV that was produced and written by J. Stan McCauley right. um, called Public Enemy Number One. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was that was a lot of fun. And that's when I fell in love with film. And actually, it was that film and the play The Door that pushed me into writing and composing. Because I've always played an instrument, but I never thought of myself as a musician. Okay. So what do you... What, I, mean, what I play do you, keyboards, oh. I play drum, I play flute. Uh, a little bit of guitar, bass, um, but it was Stan was was putting together the music for this play, Public Enemy, and he had gotten a CD from a Hollywood music company, oh. and I heard the music, and I something just said to myself, I can do that. So Stan put it to me, and he's like, Okay, well then do it, and I'll never forget. If you don't mind, I'll share this Go testimony. Ahead, share, share the testimony. I um. I had a laptop that was probably two inches thick and just graduated from Cobalt probably. And um, so, some $50 software that I had prodded and pushed and begged Stan to help me get called Multitrack Studio and some com computer speakers. And I went in, into my home studio and I comprised these songs and I really thought I had something. It was my first time ever experiencing with software. I really didn't know too much about computers. Um, or recording, or engineering, or mixing, or any of these things. I had uh, what you would call a sure held mic. I, I didn't know anything about vocal recordings. And I'll never forget, I played this for Stan and Silver Sargent, and a few other people that have been, Maurice Starr, that have been in the industry for quite some time. And I remember all of them were just laughing, 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 laughing. And so at that point, I was more determined to... to um, produce and compose my own music and I spent two years uh, working with a, um, a Nuendo and some more extensive programming and started producing and composing my own music and subsequently now I have an album called Songs of Solomon that's the music that you hear okay. but had it not been for that experience I probably would not have gotten into engineering and recording my own music Oh, okay. This seems like a lot of fun, though, doing your own music. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. I have a great respect for people like Stan McCauley or folks who work behind the scenes in editing. Yes, it takes a lot of time. Oh, my goodness. Especially mixing, video editing. Yes. I've done that, and it takes a lot. Mixing down music, getting it to sound right. right. I mean, it's just hours, and you can spend hours just on eight bars of, right. of a song, you know, of just course. to get it right. I can believe it. Because <laughs> for two minutes for a song, for an intro, I spent a couple of hours. See, see, yeah. yeah, well, more than a couple hours, like eight. But anyway, going on, talking about you. Um, actually, I was in a um, modeling competition with you, too. Yes, so that was kind of interesting. Yep. <laughs> that was really interesting. That was with, uh, I believe that was with Carrie Truman McCrory. Right. You and I modeled um, at the Marriott. Right. And... Uh, I think there was another venue. Oh, I think also at Vibes. There was a few other places. Um, I've actually done some plays uh, with them as okay. well. Yeah. Also, too, found out that I had writing abilities because of uh, The Door and working with Carrie Trim McCrory. And I'm actually right. working on a play that is in a takeoff of The Door called Jenny's Song. Okay. Um, right. And that'll be coming out um, within a year. Okay. So, so a lot how of many characters projects. are you going to have in this play? 
It's 11 characters. The door started out as 11 different vignettes. And it was a very hard-hitting play that um, we were actually pushed out of a lot of churches because it was, okay, it, right. it was just too raw. And I sat down with Stan and I said, well, let me put some music to these scenes. to these." And, uh, and so we did that and I produced it and, and, and performed in it as the door at, um, at the uh, Black Box Theater. It, my music got great reviews in The Advocate and in The Current, um, but they were saying that because the vignettes basically had the same theme, that by the second or third vignette you could tell what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was I just connected all the characters and created a storyline behind one uh, particular character named Jenny. Um, and its, its premise is the cycle of abuse that uh, occurs in the family, from mm -hmm. parent to child, from that child becoming a parent to their children. Yeah, um, so, it does happen too. Yeah. And uh, I think that's very, that's another subject to oh, talk yeah, about yeah. too later on. On my program, I will talk about that abuse and everything else like that. So thank you for hitting me up with that topic that yeah. I could uh, bring somebody on about that. Um, that has uh, developed more and has prospered and, you know, went to their program and developed, like I said. Anyway, let's move on. And. Um, you told me you had a song too. You and I were talking earlier. Did you have a new album coming up? Is that okay? Right. The, the I wrote the song is actually from the play The Door, mm -hmm. and it is um, and also my own life story. Mm -hmm. um, it speaks of us just being soldiers in the army of the Lord, and that only what we do for God really is infinite. Um, I've been a father, a husband, all different various types of artists. Um, a provider. I've been so many things, um, but only what only what we you know only what we do for God lasts. I mean, kids grow up, um, they move out, they ha they start their own families. The material wealth can be here today and gone tomorrow. Right. Um, That's so true. yeah, it's, you know. So I wrote this song called Soldier because basically all we are really is soldiers in God's army, and this life is but a boot camp um, that builds character and the trials and tribulations. Um, work out the infirmities in us so that God can use us um, to be uh, true representatives of his word to bring other people um, into the kingdom of God. So that's what the song Soldier is about. And, um, and then the next album that came from that was Songs of Solomon. I opened the Bible one day up to Songs of Solomon and it's very romantic, it's very explicit. And I thought about the love songs that we have today. Oh, gosh. And I was like, you know, I mean, it's getting hot in here. Let's take all your clothes yeah. off, things like that. And What's so I, I wanted to write something that was romantic and appealing to married couples, yeah. as well as people that were engaged or even right. single people thinking about getting married without having all the, you know, perversion. Yeah. And so I wrote five or six gospel love songs based okay. around the whole concept of the song. Well, I like A House Is Not A Home <laughs> by Luther <laughs> See, Vandross. Yeah, That's yeah. really nice. I'm really hooked on that one. That's and, actually one of my all-time favorites. Yeah. And I love Luther's old songs. And I tell you, the old songs are much better these yeah. days than to listen to the other stuff. Barry White, of course, you know. Yep, Teddy like, yeah, Teddy Pendergrass. Well, Teddy. you know. <laughs> Here and there, yeah. yeah. That's when we started to lean. <laughs> yeah, on the, <laughs> the side. Well, one, one of my favorite artists is like Stevie Wonder. Yes, it's good. You know, and we still had some groups that came through the ranks that kind of took from that old style, like Joe to see, Boys okay. to Men. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I kind of mixed a little bit of old school and contemporary gospel and created these love songs um, oh, for okay. couples. So then after that album, I was still kind of searching for purpose. You know, the kids are all grown. grown. I'm, I'm an empty nester now, single. And um, I was like, okay, God, so what's next? You know, what is my purpose in life? And so God, you know, it brought me back to the song Soldiers, because really all I am is a soldier in God's mm -hmm. army. And so now I'm working on an album called Messiah and God's Soldiers. And that will be premiering uh, November first at Mount Olive uh, here in oh, okay. uh, Hartford. I think I might have seen something about... Uh, right, there's an event on, that's yeah, posted on, coming on. on Facebook. And also, um, the premiere, the uh, the prelude to that premiere 
I'll be up in Nyack, New York. Okay. Um, uh, gospel on the Park. Okay. Up, uh, um, it's a gospel show that they premiered up, up and coming artists. And so um, soldiers hopefully will be ready by then. Uh, I'm still looking for people. Um, to do what? To actually want to be part of the group. I'll be a backup singer. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. But I want to say this on, on, my, on, on accesstv.org. I know I'm seasoned now. Okay. And so I'm looking for people that are seasoned. It's not just about having a talent. Um, you can have a talent, no anointing, and be ineffective. Okay. And so I'm looking for people. I'll be a little bit. Of, I don't see that much now. <laughs> when I remember the time you went to, we went to the play and auditioned, right? Oh, Come yeah. Come on, are you a singer? I'm like, what? I said, I'll sing backup. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm still looking for, looking for you know, ministers and music. Yeah. Well, I haven't had a chance to hook up with the people, so you know what? Hey. <laughs> okay, okay. Send me as a last minute. Can you help me out? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I think that's good. Um, actually, uh, what are your you know struggles as you're you know producing your records and stuff like that? That's what I'm trying to say. Is what were the struggles of trying to you know go through that and actually following up and having this record um, up to par in November? Um, I'm talking about your album. I can talk about up until the past four years. Yeah. Uh, something pe people don't usually don't like to talk about their personal life, but mine's a testimony. Um, four years, four and a half years ago, unfortunately, um, I ended up divorced, and that can take away everything. And so now, basically, my my projects are done by faith. Mm. You know, what I'm saying I never know when the next uh, money's going to come in so that I can buy CDs. Mm. Um, uh, buy uh, the what do they call those? The jewel cases, okay. the ink to print the cartridges. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, all course. the yeah, yeah. the booking, the marketing. You know, sometimes I'll take a day where I'm just on the internet for six, seven hours, just marketing my music mm -hmm. to different Christian groups, different gospel groups, different churches, different ministries. Um, so it's not easy and. I would like to mention Arjo Winch. Had I not oh, met, yeah, of course, yes. 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 Thank I you, Arjo. You. <clears throat> I'm gonna put your name out there. So thank you very much, Arjo. I was her. I also delved in politics. I was her campaign manager <laughs> oh, okay. when she ran for state rep against uh, President uh, State Rep Douglas McCrory, and um, it was really her that got behind me last year and just started pushing me about this song, Soldier. And she was like, Marcus, with all these talents that you have, there's no reason why you shouldn't be a millionaire ten times over. <laughs> And um, and that really kind of started my focus, you know, and she started booking events. And she said, Marcus, you're not going to book yourself because if you do, you won't get paid and you won't eat. Mm -hmm. So she started booking my events and making sure that I got paid and, and helping me out with the uh, CDs and promoting me and, and getting me, uh, um, just getting me the exposure. Okay. So. For people that are seasoned, okay, um, do you have uh, info? well, a regular telephone number or some kind of contact information that they can call you. Are you going to do it like that too also and just have auditions? Yes. With people? Um, there's going to be an event created on Facebook called Soldiers. Okay. Um, the auditions, God willing, will be held at Mount Olive. Okay. Uh, my number is 860-890-5500. Um, you can email me your resume or bio or portfolio or soundtracks that you have to Marcus, M-A-R-C-U-S dot Jarvis, J-A-R-V-I-S, 39, when I used to be, because that's <laughs> when I established the, uh, <laughs> the Gmail, at gmail.com. Or you can hit me up on Facebook. It's Marcus Messiah, M-O-S-I-A-H, mm -hmm. Jarvis. And Messiah being messenger, not Messiah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you that. So those are for the serious folks, okay? So don't forget about that. And... Um, Along the way, because we have about eight minutes left, okay. um, what do you want to tell the people out there about, um, let's see, how you started out, you know, what they should look for, what are the traps, I guess, you know, because you and I were talking about black businesses and stuff like that on the phone. Right now, I'm at Goodwin College, um, uh, attaining my bachelor's in science in business administration. Mm -hmm. One thing, in my most humble opinion, that I feel we as people of color now, can't say about before, but now, and especially in the city of Hartford, is we lack a sense of business. And that was always one of my weak points. Um, 
uh, in terms of music contracts, business contracts, um, marketing uh, capabilities, uh, and counting the cost before you actually go into something, uh, how to set up a business. And so I would encourage people that who have gifts and talents to go and take a business course. Um, because when you're an artist, you are in business for yourself and you are the product. And so, you, you know, you need to protect yourself. You need to understand business law and ethics. Mm. Um, you know, study a little bit of accounting. Even if you're going to delegate some of these responsibilities to other people because you can't do it all, yes, at, right. at least have a knowledge. You know, you're going to have an attorney, but still understand music law if you're going into music. Okay. Uh, just the basics. You're going to have an accountant, but still understand how to balance your own books, your own personal finances. You know, um, that's one thing that's lacking in the uh, industry. Uh, in the industry. Yeah, because I noticed that they always say that they owe so much money in back taxes. Yeah. So I was like, What's it's like, going who's on? managing these people? Yeah. You know? And who do they entrust to manage themselves? I mean, a lot of the old artists like Sammy Davis Jr., um, who's that actor that played uh, Fred Sanford? Red Fox. Red, Red Fox. Fox. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could think of so many people, artists, that for, were icons, but they died broke. Yeah. And they had nothing left to leave behind. You know, one of my favorite, two favorite people that I admire the most is Prince and oh. Michael Jackson. Yeah, Prince. Oh, man, he's on. You know, my, my, <laughs> like when Michael Jackson him. bought the rights to the Beatles oh, and, bought, wow. and, and owned 40%, I think it was over 40% of Sony Records. I mean, wow. that is a great business move, mm -hmm. you know, to empower yourself. Um, and if not, you have artists that get signed with these major labels and they say, oh, you got a half a million dollar contract. But by the time you get through paying producers right. and publishers, that's and true. you end up not making any money until your second or third album. Mm. And then, too, you lose your, your writer's creativity because, you know, now you, they, basically they own you. Right, right. Thank God for technology now that we as artists can actually produce and promote right. ourselves or cut out a lot of the middlemen um, and basically do it on our own or find people that we trust that are not connected to, say, a major label. Um, sometimes you can get contracted with a major label and get what we call shelved. You know what I'm saying? You're signed with them. They're really not doing anything with you, but you can't do anything with anybody else. So you may sit for two to five years doing absolutely nothing. Wow. So, yeah, my advice to go get a, you know, even if it's just an associate's degree in business, mm -hmm. do it. Do it. Okay, yeah. I'm sure there's uh, lots of financial funding out there. Yes. <laughs> um, the Golden Ticket Award. A lot of people are not aware of that. Yeah, what is that? The Golden Ticket Award is a faith-based initiative program through specific churches. I'm sorry, that if you're a single parent or you fall within a certain income bracket, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, they pay for your schooling. It's not a loan, it's a grant. Yeah. Okay, and it's two years to four years mm. uh, grant to pay for your schooling. So that's how I'm at Goodwin College, oh, okay. at the Golden Ticket Award. Oh, how interesting. That is really cool. Because a lot uh, of what students, about the middle class, though, that are you know trying to work and well, you know, do I, they don't really have too many, too much for them. It almost seems like you you're more wealthy when you're poor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the middle class is getting smaller and smaller, and the wealthier getting wealthier. Right. The student loan is a whole scam in itself. How how we as a society can tell a student, hey, I'm going to give you a credit card. And you can borrow up to eighty to a hundred thousand dollars because college is expensive now. Mm -hmm. And before you graduate or even have a job, you're eighty thousand dollars in debt. Mm -hmm. You know, so now you're spending the next thirty to, to fifty years trying to pay it off, trying to pay, you know, trying to dig yourself out of that. So I think there needs to be some serious reform in the educational system, mm -hmm. um, and especially in the inner cities for children who are not as fortunate who are not part of that 5% of the wealthy population and can go to Ivy League schools and pay for it. You know, yeah. It's a lot of talent that's uh, missed and looked over because they don't have the degree or the training to cultivate that talent. Mm. That's something to think about, yeah. Um, well, I wish you know school was really, really affordable, mm. but some people can go at a cheaper price and some people can't. But it depends on what you want in life Mm -hmm. How you want to prosper and the sacrifices. Yeah, this is true. And also, too, I put God in everything. Yeah. Because where doctors fail, where, where judges say no, 
When all the doors are closed, the Bible says God can open doors that no man can open. Yes. There are jobs I've had that, is no, that I was not qualified to be there. And I know it was only God that placed me there. Mm. Um, and so faith and prayer go a long way. Faith and prayer go a long, long, long way. Okay. So. So you still, uh, what church you attend? You still go to church, right? I'm at, yes, I am. I am at the First Cathedral. Oh, uh, really? Yep. Under okay, in Hartford. Bay. Yep. No, okay. actually, it's Bloomfield. Oh, yeah, that's right. They it's were in, in Hartford. They, yeah, were, they were. They started in Hartford yep. on, on Greenfield Street. Sweet. Awesome church. Strong men leadership in there, which is what the, in my most humble opinion, the African American community needs. Need. Okay. We need strong male leaders, and bishop don't play. No, he doesn't. no, you're not getting up there to preach. You're not going to lead unless you, you know, you got to go through protocol. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so it's got the whole program for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. You won't see any anybody half-stepping up there. He'll be sitting oh, okay. there. he sit you down. <laughs> oh, that's good, yeah. I've met him. Uh, he's a very nice man, so. Change. You know, there's a, any time that you are in the public eye, you can become a bullseye. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, yes. And people have said some positive things and some negative things. And I always respond to this. Are you doing what he's doing and have you done what he's done? Mm. You know what I'm saying? We're okay. some five, 6,000 members strong. You can't tell me that out of those five, 6,000 people, the gospel's not being preached and somebody's life has not been changed by mm. what this man has done. Yeah. You know, so. yeah, he's got a lot of functions going oh, on. Oh, my goodness. I know my mother was here. We went to a couple of functions that were really nice. The other thing, too, is the tithe money that comes into that church goes back out into the community. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's, in, that's lacking in the church at, at large in the city of Hartford. First Cathedral has so many programs um, from summer camps to uh, foreclosure prevention for homeowners. Mm -hmm. um, they have counseling. They have a health fair where all the local doctors oh, yeah. come in. And uh, free prostate exams for men 45 and 55 years old. Mm. They were responsible for the clinic being uh, built on Albany Avenue. That's okay. designed, you know, I mean, there's so many different programs that are not publicized. People have their high school graduations, you know, at the uh, First Cathedral. Yeah. It enabled us to bring artists that we, I mean, they seek more than the Bushman. I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. So oh, yes. it, it offers a lot of services um, that you don't get in the smaller churches or in churches that don't take that tithe money and put it back in the community. As a matter of fact, there's a whole second phase. Um, we're even thinking about having our own high school and our own um, elementary, our own junior high school. The Bible says, you know, to possess ye the land. So we should actually be the example raising up godly children um, in a system where we can instill godly values and in a private or in a public uh, I'm sorry in a public school system we can't do that under under state laws mm. well, that's very interesting not to come visit um, yes, the church yes. again yes <laughs> and of course JJ Hairston that's our, our music uh, oh yeah uh, minister of music okay. awesome 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 young man husband father just incredible. I think he's been putting on a couple of functions too, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, I've been seeing that. Um, on previous emails that go to me from a good friend, Lister McBride. Yeah. Uh, thank mm -hmm. you very much. You, uh, you know Lister? I McBride's, and there's a big McBride. family. So oh, okay. All righty. Well, um, got a few more minutes. What I want to do is really let everybody know, hey, this is Marcus Jarvis. Thank I you. really thank had you. a good time with him. And um, actually, I want you to keep up your career, and uh, I want to buy that for the um, album that's coming out. Right? Okay, the yep. Songs of Solomon. Yes. Okay, so you got my number, so make sure you call me. Okay? Well, you get a complimentary uh, CD. All so right, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, I like that. I like that. All right, <laughs> and don't forget about tomorrow in Hartford. Uh, I believe it's Elizabeth Park. I haven't went out there in a long time. Um, it's after church, 2 to 5. There you go. Yeah, after church, 2 to 5, Sunday. And, um, and also Sunday, I'll be at Mount Olive. This Sunday? At, yes, tomorrow at 6 o'clock. Oh, okay. So you got a full day, everybody. Um, and what will you be doing? At it's a free concert. Okay. Um, it'll. I'll be singing some of my songs from the Songs of Solomon. Oh, okay. At this concert. Just kind of... Um, uh, a small release to give them a little taste of, of what's coming up uh, down the line. All right. So be there in Hartford tomorrow. Lots of things happening. And Alvin Carter, uh, thank you very much. He's got a lot of things going on too. So the next time I come on, 
uh, talk about Mr. Alvin Carter. Are you yes. familiar with him? Yes. Right? As a matter of fact, Alvin Carter and I go back some 20 years. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I'm just exposed how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so we got to go. It's been fun. So thanks for joining me. And thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah.